Hi, I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, I want to give you four different ways to use the compressor block in the Axe FX3. I'm using the latest firmware, firmware 21.02, which includes some updates, improvements, and additions to the compressor block. First, I'm using a Fender Buddy Guy strap with gold lace sensors straight into the Axe FX3. I'm using the 1987X treble model in here with my go-to LT-TV Mix 7 IR and a little bit of the Recording Studio C reverb. Let's hear the clean tone. <laughs> As always, with a clean tone for me, I like it when you hit really hard, you get a tiny amount of breakup. It's definitely not a pristine clean, but it's nice and fat and edgy. So let's do this. Let's simply add a compressor block before the amp. I've got the Studio Feed Forward compressor, which is the stock compressor type. I haven't touched it, so I've literally just added a compressor block. And this one, using the new compressor updates, I think sounds fantastic if you just want to use a compressor as a kind of sweetener, fattener, enhancer on your core guitar tone. Let's hear the difference. One reason I like this is it is so instantly gratifying. Compressors can be a confusing effect, especially if you're inexperienced with using them. So using this method, I think, encourages people to just dive in. And if you're inexperienced with compressors, you have to start somewhere, and this is such a great place to start. You can see in here there's an auto attack and release and an auto makeup gain switch in there. So you don't really need to dial anything in, which I really, really like. All I would encourage people to do is maybe play around with the ratio control on here. Let's try a ratio of four instead of two and have a listen to what happens. <laughs> Ratio somewhere between two and four is pretty much perfect for what I like in this particular context on the Studio Feed Forward Compressor, the stock type. It works so well. I'd encourage you to try it out, especially if you're a Strat or Tele player or anyone using kind of jangly single coils. It can add some real girth to your playing. The second way I like to use a compressor, let's go over to channel B here, is to use one of the either pedal compressors, there's two pedal compressors in here, or the Dynamicomp compressor. What we were hearing in the first instance was pretty subtle. We were using the compressor as an always-on tone enhancer. In this case, we're going for maximum squish. So I've turned the compression amount up to eight. I wouldn't touch anything else in here. And this is going to give you that familiar, you know, kind of iconic 70s, 80s, small little guitar pedal, compressor tone. Let's have a listen to it. This is very noticeable in my opinion. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dynamic Comp is the classic, but I think the Pedal Compressor 2 with very similar settings on there also sounds fantastic. Let's hear that one. Start bypass and I'll kick it in. <laughs> Let's move along now to one of the new sustainer types. Essentially, a sustainer is the inverse of a compressor. A compressor makes loud signals quiet. A sustainer makes quiet signals loud. I love the way the new JFET sustainer type works with the sustain cranked right up. So let's do this. Let's go back to the neck pickup and let's use this as a boost. Again, this isn't a subtle use of this effect, but it can take this kind of clean edge breakup tone and really push it in a lovely way that you wouldn't get with, say, a traditional boost or drive pedal. <laughs> Furthermore, that feels so good under the fingers. I love playing with a lot of distortion and distortion, you know, kind of reduces the amount of dynamic range. So it gives you a compressed feeling, but you've got a lot of distortion this way, still a lowish amount of drive, but you've got the wonderful kind of feeling under your fingers of having a lot of sustain and compression in there. I really like that trick. The last one, we're gonna place a compressor after the amp and cab block kind of studio style. To do that, I've set the input level of this optical compressor to line level. I'd recommend that if you're running it after the amp and cab. I've disabled auto makeup and I've just relatively matched this to unity gain. So that works out to be about a level of four over here. You can set this for whatever you like. You could even set it for a boost or a cut if you like. Auto attack and release is on. I've turned the threshold up to minus 40 and I set the light type to EL foil, which is kind of based on an Empirical Labs distressor, a kind of modern classic compressor type. The idea here is I would use this with a little bit more grip from the amp. So let's say turn the gain on the amp up a little bit. And I wanna use this so that the kind of volume difference between really digging in and backing off or using my volume control is a little bit more normalized. This can be very handy on a recording or live. Let's have a listen to what it does. <laughs> Thank you. 
course, it sounds amazing in combination with one of the other methods on there. Try these four different styles and applications of compressors and let me know which ones you like in the video description. Be sure to click like and subscribe. And as always, if you have any suggestions for future videos, put them in the comment section below. I'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for watching.